At the time of this video, it's safe to say Dolby Labs is the king of high dynamic range and spatial sound. The logo can be seemingly everywhere there is a screen or speaker. With so much content and product out there with so many companies, how is quality controlled? In this video, Dolby helps shed some light on how products are stamped with the Dolby Double D logo, and we'll see just how important these formats and licenses are to the company. The Double D can be found on marketing materials for phones, speakers, televisions, gaming consoles, games, music, cars, movie theaters, and more. Like all companies or products that become successful, there can be a point where there is market saturation of said product or content and consumers can become tired. The easiest and most recent example to look at is Marvel struggling to recapture its glory days since Avengers Endgame finished in 2019. Some on social media have even criticized Dolby Atmos and Dolby Vision as being overhyped and a downright disappointment. Is this because the novelty of spatial sound or high dynamic range has worn off and consumers are tired of everything being marketed as Dolby Atmos or Dolby Vision? Is it because consumers are accustomed to high quality content now and are demanding something new? Dolby Laboratories fiscal year 2022 SEC filings even shows the company made 93% of its revenue from licensing to around 500 companies. With just over 2,300 employees in total working at the company, and almost half of them outside of the United States, Dolby would be hard-pressed to go to every manufacturer and studio making a product to ensure quality. So this begs the question, how does Dolby ensure quality? Believe it or not, Dolby is not the one ensuring the quality. It is the creatives at the studios who are the ones in charge of the quality. We are not policing the creation. We don't want to get involved in this. This is up to the creatives and there is not such a thing as a bad or a good Dolby Atmos mix in my mind. The, the, the mixer, the studio, but mainly the mixer makes a decision about how much they use what Dolby Atmos enables them to do at the best way. And I mean, Atmos is use the word surround sound and I always get a little of a goose skin when I hear that goosebumps when I hear that because Dolby Atmos is not surround sounds. Dolby Atmos is delivering a three-dimensional sound experience that can be delivered in very different ways. Uh, in the living room you may have a very sophisticated speaker setup like 5.1.4 with four uh, height speakers and those may be height speakers actually installed in your ceiling or they may be upwards firing speakers but you may have also have a sound bar which delivers already an Atmos experience. So at the end of the day the, the way an Atmos mix is created really depends on the decision that the mixer makes how much they want to use the three dimension um, the three dimensional space and how much they want to move the sound objects around you that kind of creates that. And I, I understand that individuals would say, wow, why is the sound not coming from here or there? Or why is that object not moved in the, it's not panned in the way that I would expect it to be panned? It's not our choice. That's the choice of the creative. This would explain why some Atmos or Vision Stamp movies don't look or sound as good as others. It's not Dolby approving the final product. It's a studio exporting a Dolby file, which is then decoded by your phone, TV, audio receiver, or other Dolby capable device. So while the images or sound being played back are indeed Dolby Vision or Dolby Atmos, they might not look or sound good to you because editors and creatives may not have put a lot of time and effort into a final product. So if Dolby isn't approving the final product, then how is content getting the Atmos or Vision logo stamped onto them? In a written response to Movie University, Dolby stated, during post-production, the audio team that worked on the movie mixed the film in Dolby Atmos or for Dolby Vision, the colorist graded the film in Dolby Vision using workflows enabled with Dolby tools. Through this process, they generated a mezzanine file containing a Dolby Vision and or Dolby Atmos metadata, which are the building blocks of what enable the end consumer viewing experience. If content is labeled as available in Dolby Vision and or Dolby Atmos, 
That means there is underlying information within the movie, show, game, etc. that will enable a Dolby experience. Being certified is not a prerequisite to creating content using our tools, nor does Dolby certify content for it to be released in Dolby Vision. However, creators can become certified in creating content in Dolby Vision or Dolby Atmos through Dolby's own internal curriculum. It can be surprising when content doesn't look or sound good because Dolby's baseline standards are quite high, as can be seen in this Netflix certification page. Here, you'll see the minimum requirements needed to be met for content creators. While there is not a perfect way to ensure every single Dolby Stamp product is superb, the fact that the company has endured so long over the decades and grown rapidly over the years is a testament to how hard Dolby works to innovate technology and work with creators to give us consumers amazing products. Let me know in the comment section below your thoughts on Dolby Vision or Dolby Atmos. This is Movie University, education in cinema.